What's up? Hey, are you guys, uh, man, that, that worship was good. Let me just say this. I, I'm really hopeful tonight um, that God stirs some things in you. I'm excited for, like, we're starting a new series tonight. I'm excited for some good stuff. Um, I, and I just need to know, like, are you, are you ready to, um, to encounter some of God's truth tonight? Like, are you ready for that? Like, can you handle that? Let's, what? Okay, okay. It's like a really mild and meek ready, though. So here's what I want to do. I want to pray for us. God, would you move in this place? Would you let us encounter you? Would you have your way? In Jesus' name, if you agree, say amen. Amen. Okay. Um, now here's the thing. I want to take, uh, I want to offer an opportunity for you to guess what seven-year-old Josh would have wished for if he could have wished for anything. I feel like I talk about little kid Josh a lot. Like, what do you feel like, Eli? It's just Legos. That's actually the first answer, and it's the absolute right answer. And here's the thing. I can tell you the Lego kit that I would have wanted as a little kid because Lego made a medieval castle kit that had, like, a little green dragon, and it had, like, a, a really dope knight on a horse, and I was all about it. Like, I wanted that castle so bad. And listen, I would have wasted all of the wishes of, like, anything in the world on, like, a little cat. Like, that would have been it. I would have been like, I want a Lego castle. And they would have been like, you could have had billion. Okay, whatever. All right, that's fine. You want a Lego castle? Like, here's the thing. I know, I know you're going to get to a spot. Here's the thing. I had this moment as a dad this week where I was, like, having a conversation with my kid. And I was like, listen, you can have a bite of candy right now or you can have a whole bag of candy later. What do you want? And he's like, I want a bite right now. And I was like, wrong answer. No. You wait for the full bat. Like, I was trying to get that point across. He was like, nope, definitely double down. I want a bite of candy. And I was like, come on, kid. And here's the thing. I don't know if you've ever thought about, like, if you could be offered one thing right now and you would get it. Did you know that there's actually biblically a right answer to that? Right? There would be, like, a biblically right response. The Bible actually says there's something that you should long for and search after more than anything else. Can you guess what it is? Jesus, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Jesus answer. What did you say? Okay, you said Jesus. Somebody said wisdom. Wisdom. I don't know what gave that away other than there's the giant letters W-I-S-E on the screen. And if that didn't tip you off, I want to talk about wisdom. Uh, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Can I read you a verse? Can I read you a verse? Listen, in my own Bible reading a couple months back, I came across, I came across this verse, and it actually... It actually stopped me, and I was like, this doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know that I fully believe it the way it deserves to be believed. You ready for this? Proverbs chapter 8, and it said something that I wasn't ready for. It says, choose my instruction, and this is wisdom talking. It says, choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. Now, here's the deal. I'm pretty confident that if I had asked you, like, hey, how many of you want an limitless supply of gold? Like, that wasn't, nobody said gold at the top of their list, right? Like, nobody in this room was like, you know what? If I could have had anything, I would have picked rubies, right? Like, that, that didn't pop up for any of you. You were like, I would like a precious stone, like an emerald. You know, like, that didn't jump up. But you understand the value, right? And here's the other part that catches me off guard a little bit. Because if somebody were to come to you this summer and say, hey, listen, I need you. I would really like to offer you um, this incredible opportunity. You ready for this? I want you to come and work with me 50, 60 hours every single week, okay? I want you to work with me like 60 hours every week this summer. And at the end, when it is time for your paycheck, I want to give you life lessons. <laughs> you feel that, right? You feel that if somebody offers you that, you're like, get out of here. <laughs> like, you, you say it in less nice terms. You go, no, no, just no. No, I am not. I'm not working 60, 70 hours for life lessons. And here's the thing that blows my mind is that Solomon, the writer of Proverbs, says, wisdom is more valuable than money. 
Wisdom is more valuable than anything else you could pursue. I don't know if you e- e- ever thought about this like this, but every single one of us is pursuing, um, we're pursuing a lot of the same things in life. There's a lot of things that we share in common that we want. Like we want good relationships. How many of you want to have good relationships? You want to have people that you like? You want to have people in your life that like you, right? And that's scales. So like some of you, some of you good relationships, you're like the introvert people. You're like, um, you're like, hey, I need like one good friend. I just need like one person that I can talk to. That's all I need. Any of my introvert people, just raise your hands really high, really high. I was kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just need like one person. And some of you, some of you, that like desire for good relationships, you're like, I need, I want to be, I want to be famous. I want seven billion people to know my name, right? I want them, I want them to say. Lucas Anaruma. That's what I want. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, But you feel that, right? Like some people, it scales. That's kind of, we want attention. We want affection. We want love. We want friends. We want family. We want like, we pursue that. And we spend time pursuing that. Some of us, some of us, we really want just like, we just want to be taken care of. We want our needs met. We want provision. We want things. Like, here's the, here's, the, here's the deal. For some of you, some of you are satisfied by, like, really, like, if you had enough money to go buy snacks at the dollar store for the rest of your life, that's it. You're good. You're done, right? That's it, right? Like, yeah, that's it. That's happiness. That is provision. That is good. Some of you are like, listen, I'm going to be a, a millionaire by 20, a billionaire by 30. I'm going to beat Oprah, right? Like, that's your, like, whatever, you're like, you're like, I'm going to, but, but, realize like it's all part of the same desire like some of you some of you it's not even money you're like I want I want I just want my fit to be clean I just want to drip like I just want everything right like you just you just need the stuff you're pursuing these things right well I just spent right before right before Vox I got into a conversation with some of these guys about the Instagram preachers and sneakers you guys heard of this I know we've talked about it before, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's really, like, scary. There's, like, these um, – the Instagram account takes pictures of, of pastors wearing, like, really expensive clothes, like um, like $4,000 suit, suit jackets and, like, different things like that. And, and here's the thing. Um, it got brought up because, um, because anytime I wear shoes that I won for free, I get really nervous. I own an, a pair of Yeezys that I won in a competition. And every time I wear them, I'm afraid that one of you is going to take my picture and just go, got him. Right? Like, I'm, yeah. Uh, so here's the thing, right? Um, no, no, no. But we're all pursuing. Some of us are pursuing relationships. Uh, but some of us are pursuing wealth and provision. And some of us are just looking for a good time. Like, and you just, you just want a good life. You just want to be happy. You just want to have fun. And for some of you, it's as simple as, like, you just want to go home and do a hobby. You know, you just want to draw. You want to play, play video games. For some of you, some of you, you're like, I can't wait till I can skydive. I can't wait. I'm going to get a tattoo as soon as I'm allowed. I'm going, like, you're thrill seat. You're like, I'm, I'm going to rent. I got to get on a jet ski this summer. It's got to happen, right? It's just like, you just need, like, the big things. Can I tell you something that's interesting? So hey, here's the thing. Everyone, everyone is really, we're, we're like, to some extent, people are pursuing good relationships. They're pursuing provision. They're pursuing, um, they're pursuing a, a happy, happy life. And what's interesting is that we often don't sit back and think about that we know that there are people who have those things who are miserable. That they have all of those things, more than we would ever have, and they hate it. Do you know who, um, I, I'm just gonna, like, y'all know who one of the most, I, that's l- not fair. Okay, Olivia Rodrigo, y'all know who she is? Okay, I don't, but that's okay. <laughs> She's going to preach my point for me, okay? Uh, Olivia Rodrigo, she's um, she's in that TV TV show, High School Musical, the musical, the TV show, which is like eighty. She's like eight hundred, you know, like HSM TV, MMS, whatever, whatever. That show, she was in that. Now she's a singer. She has ten singles 
in the Billboard Top 100 songs right now. So, you know, you could all go like, I don't listen to her, but it doesn't matter because like five billion kids in Europe are watching her right now, okay? So she's, so here's the thing. Olivia Rodrigo is, I think she's 17, she's 18, something like that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Can I read you? Can, wait, wait, wait. All right. Does she have, does she have wealth? Yeah. Right, she's taken care of. Can I just say, like, she made a lot of TV show money, a lot of music money. She's fine. She's going she's gonna to be fine. She can retire right now. Does she have, does she have um, fame? M more than any of us in this room combined, <laughs> okay? Um, Y'all know how many of you follow me on Twitter? Like three. I don't even go on Twitter, so that's not even real. But like, uh, but here's the deal. Like, she has fame. She's known. She's liked. She has wealth. She has these things. Does she have better experiences than you and I have, probably? I mean, like, like think about, like, does she, um, she's, she's probably going to parties that you and I will never get to go to. She probably gets to do, she probably gets to drive in cars that you will never ride in. She probably gets to rub elbows with people that you drool about. <laughs> right, like she just. And yet, and yet, her song Brutal, she writes this. I'm so sick of 17. Where's my effing teenage dream? All I did was try my best. This is the kind of thanks I get. Unrelentlessly upset. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how the song goes, so I don't know if that's like, was I close? Okay, thank you. They say these are the golden years, but I wish I could disappear. Ego crush is so severe. God, it's brutal out here. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? People are pursuing, they're pursuing fame and relationships and attention and affection and love. They're pursuing wealth and provision. They're pursuing a good life and good times and fun and pleasure. But can I tell you, you can have all of those things and still be miserable. And how does that even make sense unless there's something missing? Ooh, Freddie's going to preach it for me. But it is, it's Jesus. The answer is Jesus. And what's interesting is Jesus, Jesus gives us something called wisdom that we get to use. Uh, let me tell you, th this, is, this is incredible. The guy who writes in Proverbs 8 is a king named Solomon. How many of you have heard of Solomon before? He was Israel's third king ever, okay? He's their third king, and when he comes to reign in Israel, he, um, he kind of, uh, he has this incredible moment where God says, um, I, I want to, I want to bless you. Pick something, anything, could be anything. Pick something that you want me to do for you, and I'm going to do it for you. Now think of that moment. If God were to come to you and say, I could give you tonight anything you would want. There's probably, there's probably some, now listen, I know some of you have like really great hearts. You guys are like, you love Jesus, you follow Jesus. So I, I know some of you would have like really genuine hearts. I remember we did, a, we did a, a, a small group and some of you were in that small group and we did a thing where we were like, hey, if you had all the money in the world, what would you buy? And like, I'm pretty sure like my, my answer was like, I'd buy, I'd buy like a Maserati MC12, and like some of you were like, I would buy, I would buy orphanages and make sure that they're provided for forever. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, me too. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Solomon is asked by God, hey, I'll give you anything. What do you want? And Solomon says, I want an understanding heart. In other words, he says, I want wisdom. 
And God responds, 1 Kings 3, verse 11. This is hilarious to me. He says, uh, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies. You know, like things that normal kings ask for. You know, like, um, you imagine, like, um, what do you want? I want all of my enemies dead. That would just love, right? Like, like okay, okay. All right. Um, but here's the deal. You know what I love about Solomon's answer of wisdom? He says, I want wisdom. God is like, oh, my, I did not see that coming, bro. I did not. You want wi- I like, I have a lot of money I could get, but okay, wisdom. And he says, I want wisdom. I want to have wisdom. And when he has wisdom, it's incredible. Because God responds in verse 13. And he says, I will also give you what you did not ask for. Riches and fame, long life, a good life. Can I tell you what's interesting? What's interesting about this is that Solomon says, I want one thing. I'm going to pursue one thing, and it's wisdom. I'm going to pursue wisdom. And God says, okay, wisdom comes with a lot of secret benefits that, that nobody told you about. See, because wisdom is the foundation for good relationships. Did you know that? That if you don't have wisdom, you can sabotage the best relationships. You ever had a good relationship with your friend and you did something really stupid and it broke it up? Right? (laughs) You're like, no. Is that like a, I didn't have friends, like I didn't make that mistake. You're better than me. You're better than me. That's fine. That's fine. No, no, no. But like, no, isn't it true that wisdom, wisdom is a foundation for strong relationships? Yeah. It is, isn't it true that, um, that wisdom is a foundation for, like, for provision? Like, you don't see, have you, well, how about, how about this? You can probably name people, and we'll talk about this in a bit. You can probably name people who had a lot of money at one point and have very little money because they, like, blew it all, right? You know, like, they had a, they had a ton of money, and then it's just gone. And then you have a couple people, like, um, there's a guy, there was a guy that my parents met this last week. He grew up homeless his entire life. Like, as a kid, he lived in the woods all through school. He had one pair of clothes all through school. When he graduated, he, he, um, he bought, like, a little thing and then flipped it and made a lot of money. And then he started using wisdom and applied it to the work, and he started flipping things and reselling it and reselling it. And by 30, he retired a millionaire. Like, he just built this thing. Now, here's the thing. He started with nothing. How do people that start with nothing get to that place? He applied wisdom, right? Like, it's the foundation for that provision. And then there's there's those of us that are looking for, like, pleasure, looking for looking for enjoyment. But can I tell you that all of that can be squandered? You ever been you ever been somewhere really fun and it was still miserable? I love oh that's sad. I there's a there's a moment there's a moment in in um in the TV show The Office where one of the characters shares about crying at Disney World. Any, anybody remember what I was talking about? He's like I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't process how beautiful it was, right? And you're just like, wisdom is the foundation. Wisdom is the foundation. And listen, here's the thing, here's the thing. Can I tell you why I'm having this conversation with you? Because I'm pretty confident that no one around you, you don't have, you don't have, a single Instagram influencer that's out there like, hey, listen, guys, I just make just make sure that you buy wisdom and not my makeup brand. Right. You don't have you don't have anybody on YouTube who's like, hey, guys, watch this stupid stunt. But just so you know, we were very wise in how we did this. Right. Like you don't have anybody marketing wisdom to you. You have a million people marketing stupidity to you. Right. Like, you, every single YouTube channel is basically like, hey, guys, I'm going to do something that's really crazy. Watch this. <laughs> and then buy my things or watch more or subscribe or click, right? Like, and every Instagram influencer is like, do this thing and get this and you'll be happy like me. And nobody is saying, listen, God's wisdom is more valuable than anything. 
And I need you to understand something because the Bible says that God's wisdom is more valuable than anything. And I don't think anybody else is telling you that. Like that God's wisdom is more valuable than any other thing that you could pursue, that you could spend time on. It's so valuable. It's worth more than anything you could pursue. And Solomon lived this. I'm so excited for the rest of this series. Next week, next week we're going to talk about where to get wisdom. So, like, if, if you're even remotely interested tonight, like, if, if, I, if I spark something in you tonight that you're like, okay, you know what? Wisdom sounds good. I think I'd like that. Next week we're going to talk about how you find wisdom, how you get it, where it comes from, how to grow. The week after that, I'm excited. We're going to talk about, because the Bible, the Bible in the book of Proverbs, it tells you, hey, listen, if you're having a hard time figuring out what wisdom looks like, let me spell out what stupidity looks like. Right? So, like, literally in a couple weeks, we're going to be like, hey, the Bible says this is what idiots do. Don't do what idiots do. Otherwise, you are a... There it is. You guys got it. You're so wise. Anyway, so I'm excited to do that. And then the week after that, we're going to say, okay... Here's wisdom, here's where to get it, here's how you use it. Because listen, listen, have you ever met people that know a lot of things and they still live poorly? Or have you, have you, have you ever met people that, um, I think about it like this, have you ever met somebody who, who went to church for a really long time and they're no better off for it? Now here's the thing that's crazy to me about that, is because it, if, if you come to church, you're hearing God's wisdom. But if you leave without applying it, you've sat and ignored wisdom. And you're just growing in, like you're just like learning things, but you're not doing anything about it. You're failing in wisdom. You're not using it in any place. You're failing in wisdom. And God says, listen, pursue wisdom more than you would pursue Anything else you could get paid. Like, it's, it's so valuable. Look at this. How many of you have, have summer jobs right now? It's awesome. I love it. Summer jobs. Summer jobs. You work in. How, how many of you, how many, did anybody, anybody get, like, paid for, like, allowance? Like, you do stuff, like, around your house, you get paid? Yo, just, I just want you to, I just want you to know that's a sweet gig. That's a sweet gig. You get paid at your house. Sweet gig, okay. Uh, and here's the thing, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Solomon, Solomon argued, he just said, listen, if you could get paid in something, wisdom pays off better than anything else. And I just want, I just wanted, I, I just want to leave you hopefully with this spark, with this idea, with this hope that if you pursued wisdom, you would grow. You would change. You'd be different. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to borrow, like, uh, Tyler. Tyler is our, I'm, you can stay right there, dog. Um, but Tyler is a, he's a finance guy. He's an advisor. He does all that. You probably have a more official title. I'd probably abuse it, but um, money manager. Um, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Tyler, what's better? I, is it better to, to start investing um, later with a lot or early with little? And why is that? He said early with little. Why is that? That's right. And if you're 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, guess what? <laughs> I, I like that y'all felt seen. I was like, so they're like, yes, I am. All right. <laughs> Listen, if you begin to seek after wisdom now, invest in wisdom in your life, guess what? It grows. It grows. You graduate, you're in a you're in a completely different place. You go through college, you're in a completely different place. Wisdom grows, it multiplies, it's exponential. I don't know if y'all like those math words. It's, it's, uh, it's exponential. You can get, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> I was going to go into like derivatives. Anybody calculus? Anybody? Anyway, all right, let's stop. Let's stop. I want to I want to encourage you in something. 
That the Bible, the Bible says that if there's something that you could seek after, you should seek after wisdom. You seek after the wisdom of the Lord. The Bible says that a awe and reverence and relationship with the Lord is the base of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. Uh, so I want to encourage you to pursue wisdom. Let me do this. Let me do this. Um, did y'all close your eyes. Close your eyes. Um, and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to, to, um, just be honest. I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty simple. But if, if wisdom is something, listen, listen, every single one of you could say right now, like, yeah, I want to be, I guess I want, I kind of want, want to be wisdom I would, I would like that. Um, I think every single one of you could like raise your hand half-heartedly and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like I kind of want, but listen, let me just ask if you, because we're going to be talking about wisdom this summer, and my hope is that this summer, God's wisdom would grow in your life. And so here's the thing. If tonight, week one of this thing, talk about wisdom, God's biblical wisdom, if you just want to say, God, I, I need, I, I want to grow in wisdom this summer, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to grow in wisdom this summer, I want to pray for you, with you, will you just raise your hand, I want to pray for you, and let's do that. So if you want wisdom, you're going to seek it, I want to join you. Father God, I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters who are hungry for the wisdom of the Lord. And God, we know that your word says that the beginning of wisdom is awe and reverence and fear of the Lord. And so just at this moment, God, we pray that tonight a deep awe, a reverence, a respect for you would settle in our minds. So deep that it compels us to pursue wisdom while others around us pursue all kinds of other things with their lives. God, we pray and hope that this summer you'd grow us in wisdom. Jesus, when you were young on this earth, your life was marked by growth in wisdom and stature and favor. And I pray over these Vox students, God, that they would grow in wisdom to be wise in their times wise for their lives wise in their relationships grow them in wisdom in Jesus name amen